All right, so a few days ago, we got to see what those new AMD processors were capable of doing. These Ryzen 4000 chips are just incredible. Eight cores, very power efficient and easily cooled. Like you can keep that thing properly cooled in a 14 inch device that is super small. Very impressive stuff. However, Intel was bound to respond and they have. So they came out with their 10th gen stuff. And here's the reality. It's not a huge jump up in performance, right? We're looking at a small bump up in clock speed and some of the SKUs have eight cores now instead of six cores, uh, but it's still 14 nanometer, it's still got six cores on the bottom end. It's still marketed as having a 45 watt TDP. So these new 10th gen Intel chips aren't super exciting to me. Like I'm much more interested in what AMD brought this year. So the million dollar question is why get an Intel based laptop right now? Like why would you get one of these instead of an AMD thing? And it's because we don't we don't get to choose. Like we literally don't get to choose. It's not like a desktop. If you have a desktop, you just go up by an AMD motherboard, AMD processor, and you have an AMD system. With this stuff, the manufacturer made this choice for you a year ago or a year and a half ago. So most of the top tier kind of premium gaming laptops are all running 10th gen Intel stuff this year. Not that they're bad or anything, but I just, I would have liked to have seen more AMD offerings because of how much potential that chip has. And the other thing, they also have the new RTX Super GPUs from Nvidia. So if you want the best possible graphics and the best possible gaming laptops, you have to go with Intel. Okay, first device, Zephyrus Duo. This is, this is so cool. I'll show you two again. When you open the device, watch the, the hinge area, ready? You open the device, the secondary screen pops up to this, I think it's like 13 degrees. Okay, I have done several videos on devices with secondary screens and they've always been these devices that were kind of cool and almost like these tech demos of what you could do with a secondary screen. But this is the first one that I've used and the first one that I've ever seen where I'm like, I want this. This is a device that I actually want to use as my regular machine because it's so much more functional and usable with this tilt. It just makes that whole secondary screen like, you know, it just, it brings it up to your face. So you don't have to like lean over and look at what you're doing. I'm gonna tilt it this way so you can see. Um, okay, so it's got your regular trimmings as a gaming laptop. It's got your 15 inch, 240 Hertz, three millisecond screen. It's like a, it's like a standard high-end gaming laptop screen. But this secondary screen, it's it's touch sensitive for one, it's 4K and it's so cool. And I've only had this for a couple days to just kind of play around with it. It's an engineering sample. I can't do like proper benchmarks on it because this is not like retail hardware, but I'm just gonna be straight up. When you play games and like, let's say you have anything running down here, like it could be a website, it could be Discord, it could be like hardware info so you can monitor your temps. It could be anything you want in there. It's right where your face would be. It's this really nice angle. I wish it was a little brighter, but my overall experience using this as a secondary screen was excellent. And if you're video editing, you throw your timeline down there, you're good to go. If you're into music production, I imagine extra screen real estate is good for that world. I know nothing of music production, but that's just how I picture it. Uh, if you're doing anything, anything that can utilize more screen real estate, which is I imagine a lot of people, that's what this offers. So it's running the 10th gen Intel CPUs. You can get either the six core or the eight core. Uh, it's got the RTX 2070 Super Max Q or an RTX 2080 Super Max Q. So it's very powerful stuff in this very powerful system. Now to achieve this secondary screen, they have to shove the keyboard down. We've seen this kind of keyboard setup in a lot of premium gaming laptops where they're trying to do something with that extra space up top. And in this case, it's a screen and there's also fans underneath the screen where it sucks in the air to just kind of keep things as cool as possible. But this lowered keyboard position is something you have to get used to. Now, I'm someone that's tested a lot of laptops like this, so I'm used to it. I'm not sure if they include a wrist rest in the retail version, but it is a different kind of keyboard positioning than you would be used to. Not just like the angle of your hand with a wrist rest or not, it's also you're further away from the screen than a regular 15 inch laptop, right? So normally your hands would probably be like four or five inches closer to the screen, which may not seem like a lot, but if you're used to playing games in a certain position, like your hands are now just further back than they used to be on this particular gaming laptop. The keyboard layout is pretty good. I believe that this one is an ISO layout, like from the European region. That's why the shift and the slash key are down here. Uh, and there's also the trackpad on the right. Again, if you're not used to it, it's a little bit weird, but you get used to it. If you're actually someone who's picking this up for using it, 
you can adapt to it quite readily. But I think most people will be using a mouse with this system regardless. So the reason why they did this whole shift was really for the screen, like to be able to have this mechanism where the screen pops up and down, or just even have a screen at all on a system like this, you need to shift that down. But look at that, look at that hinge. Like it, when you close it, it goes down. And when you open it back up, it pops up. And this hinge is really well made. Like you put pressure on it, it feels rock solid. It doesn't look like it's gonna bust or anything. Like it feels, it feels good. Um, it does make the device a little bit bigger. Like you can see the chin of the screen is a little bit thicker than your kind of average 15 inch gaming laptop. And they've done it because they just needed the, the real estate in here to fit everything they could. The screen, the keyboard, and whatever they needed internally for cooling. Okay, let's take a look at the inside. This is a easy device to get into on the bottom. And inside you have your one upgradable RAM slot. You also have your heat sinks with liquid metal from Thermal Grizzly, which is really cool. Like we've seen other companies do it as well, but when you add liquid metal, if you're unfamiliar with this stuff, when you add liquid metal as the thermal interface material on laptops, you get significantly better temperatures. There's two NVMe slots and there's one Wi-Fi 6 card from Intel. And there's also a 90 watt hour battery. Now, because this system is powering a lot of stuff, like that secondary screen probably sucks up a good amount of juice. Uh, I don't expect battery life to be amazing, but because it's not a huge laptop, I think it'll be okay. Uh, that'll come in my future review of this device. I only had two days with it, so I haven't done a proper battery test on it. But I think the overall design of this laptop has also done quite well. It's got this kind of muted gray to it. It's all metal. It's nothing super obnoxious or flashy, no crazy red accents, no crazy lights. It's like a very business oriented device that can just play games incredibly well. So during the day you can, check your stock markets with that secondary screen. And because the markets are so trash right now, you'd probably play games during the day as well. But that's the Zephyrus Duo. Keep your eye out for the review on that thing because yeah, that's a very interesting device to me. Second device of interest to me is the Razer Blade. So these have been updated this year. There's two models like the previous year. There's the Razer Blade base model, which I have here, as well as the Razer Blade Advance. Now, the thing they've changed with both of them that's most interesting to me is the keyboard. If you've seen any of my Razer Blade reviews, I've always bitched about the shift key, like the right shift key. I know it was such a minor thing and like it affected seven people in the whole world because no one seems to use the right shift except for me and Linus, but their right shift key is now with this proper shift key. It's like a regular full size shift key where you won't be making mistakes. The other thing they've added to the base model is you can now get an OLED panel option in the base model. And on the inside, they've gotten rid of the two and a half inch SATA drive and they've replaced it with a secondary M2 slot. So then there's two NVMe drives inside the uh, razor blade base model. Now this unit here is again, an engineering sample. I can't run benchmarks on it. I can't run like, I can't do anything with it, uh, at least not officially. So you'll have to wait for the proper reviews on these things, but the base models do not get the RTX super GPUs. You have to go to the advanced model to get the latest and greatest from Nvidia. These have just like the regular RTX cards. Uh, it does have an improved screen. So it's got a gaming screen, like not this one, but they have like a 144 Hertz option, but the advanced model has a 300 Hertz option, probably take advantage of the new GPUs, but they're both running 10th gen Intel CPU. So both the base model and the advanced models have those new Intel CPUs. Again, I'll be doing full reviews of these devices as they come in. Okay, now I wanna end this video off with a discussion of why. Why are almost all of the good laptops still only running Intel this year? It's a question I think a lot of you guys might be asking right now because of how good AMD's chips are. And there's obviously some conspiracies out there like maybe Intel's forcing these companies to use their stuff because, you know, for pricing. I think the real, like the reality is just track record. AMD has not had a good track record when it came to mobile processors. Clearly it's different this year. Clearly they've made something that's really good, not just good, not just excellent, but like exceeded expectations. But that's just their first time, right? So 10, 12 months ago when laptop manufacturers were trying to make that decision, do we make an AMD based laptop? Not everyone was willing to take that risk. Asus did, the G14 is excellent. It paid off for them because the chip is so good. But for these guys, right, they don't have the tooling capabilities to try something like that. If you asked Razer to make that gamble a year ago, hey, Razer, let's make an AMD blade. That's a risky move for them. That's, that's a dangerous move for them considering how small that company is compared to Asus. So I think what'll happen is that because the industry has, has you know, we have eyeballs right now on the AMD chips. They're clearly excellent like everyone loves them. So 
next year, I think these brands will probably be more aligned and more willing to go with an AMD-based laptop. So we may see an AMD-based blade. We may see AMD-based MacBooks in the future. Like there's just, there's, there's reason now, there's incentive now to build an AMD-based laptop. Okay, uh, I think that wraps up this video. I mean, these are really cool. I think an AMD based version of these things would have been even cooler, but there we have it. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.